Hello, everybody. I'm Kevin Daly for PATH. This is a presentation about the new IEP form that Connecticut public schools are using. The new IEP form was phased in over the school year last year, and by now everyone has had a chance to see it. Joining me will be Jacqueline Forchetti, who recently surveyed Connecticut parents to determine their satisfaction with the new form. Jackie is a parent, a special education teacher, and a board-certified behavior analyst. Jackie is going to review the results of her survey with us, and at the end, there will be time for questions by messaging. But first, what is an IEP, the Individualized Education Program? An IEP is a blueprint for a student's program. IEP forms have evolved over the years. My son's first IEP came at a time when computers were not widely used in, in public schools. It was handwritten. The IEP used a form, but it was a carbonless form that was filled in by hand. And if you remember back in those days, carbonless forms had, had three layers, three copies. The top form went to the school office for to keep on file. The middle copy went to central office to keep on file, and the third copy, the bottom copy, went to parents. And when computer-based forms came along a few years later, they eliminated the need for handwritten IEPs, and they made IEPs much easier to read. The current IEP form is an online form, and it's in a format that's very different from previous forms. The new online form is part of CTSEDS, which is Connecticut's new special education data system. What do parents think of the new IEP form? Let's bring in Jackie to answer that question. Jackie, would you join us, please? Sure. Hi, Kevin. Thank you for having me tonight. Welcome, and thank you for being here, Jackie. I have a question. Why did you do this survey? So I really um, chose to do my research, um, and this survey was part of a dissertation that I completed through Southern Connecticut State University. And the research focus was um, how did Connecticut's new IEP system influence the perception of parents in the IEP program process? So I really did this to give parents a voice and an opportunity to share their experiences. I see. Excellent. Well, we have a video of your presentation, and I'm going to get that going now, so please stand by, folks. Good evening. My name is Jackie Porchetti, and I was asked by Kevin Daly to present my research that I conducted um, through the Southern Connecticut State University in the Educational Leadership um, Doctoral Program. The title of my dissertation was, How Has the Connecticut Special Education Data System, commonly known as CTSEDS, influenced the perceptions of parents in the individualized education program process? First, a little bit about me and my background. I am first and foremost the parent of a 23-year-old son who has autism. I'm also a special education teacher and a board-certified behavior analyst. I conducted this research to shed light on how parents were perceiving the new special education data system to give parents a voice and also contribute something that I could share with the state in an effort to inform them about the experiences of parents with the new system. And a little bit about the background of CT says, as of July 1st, 2022, all new IEPs for special education began to be written in the new Connecticut special education data system CT says, as new students were referred and found eligible for special education services, and as reviews were due, the new IEPs would start to be developed in this new platform. CT says was intended for to be more parent friendly and also to improve the quality of the IEPs that were developed. When the state was making their decisions, they had parent forums across the state and they were held in both Spanish and English. And this slide shows information that was obtained from parents at these forums. Um, two quotes that I identified here um, was one, parents would like to see a greater emphasis on parental input in the planning of services, and also that parents do not feel that they're true partners with equal voices at the table at a PPT. 
I conducted my research through dissemination of an online survey that was available in both English and Spanish. And I conducted this survey this past summer of 2023. Um, it was a qualitative exploratory study using a survey approach. And it was looking for two particular research questions to be answered. So the first question I was looking um, for was, to what extent has Connecticut's implementation of the Connecticut Special Education Data System impacted parents' perceptions about their participation on their children's PPTs? And the second one was, to what extent has Connecticut's implementation of CT SEDS impacted parents' perceptions about the quality of their children's individualized education programs? Existing listservs and social media groups for Connecticut parents of children with disabilities were used to distribute the survey link to an online questionnaire since these parents self-identified as being the parents of students who receive special education services in Connecticut. And the slide just looks at what that survey looked like, including the welcome page and the um, consent for participation and so forth. This slide looks at the first set of survey questions um, that parents um, answered. And these were primarily demographic questions, looking at what school district their child was enrolled in, um, what grade level, how many years the IEP has been in place for your child, under what educational classification um, your child should receive special education was listed in, and if your child was an English language learner. These next set of survey um, questions were really pertaining specifically to CT SEDS. So these questions looked at, um, were you informed that CT SEDS was going to be used at the beginning of the school year? Did your district provide any training on the new platform? And then it looked at how has the new platform contributed to your understanding of your child's IEP? How has the new platform contributed to your understanding of the special education process? And to what extent has Connecticut's implementation of CT SEDS impacted the quality of your child's IEP? This slide lists all of the participants of the completed surveys. So there were 22 incomplete surveys, but I only looked at data from the complete surveys, meaning that at least one open-ended question regarding CT SEDS was answered. Um, so I had a total of 82, which you can see here. And I separated them by DERG groups. So um, in the state of Connecticut, there are nine what they call DERG groups. And it made sense to look at my data in these groups since they reflect socioeconomic status. So some key findings from my research um, were that the data showed that most parents did not understand the reasons behind the implementation of CT SEDS. Um, the majority of parents did not feel that CT SEDS had a positive impact on their child's IEP. Rather they, most, rather, they most often felt it had a negative impact. Parents were concerned that educators were spending a lot of time learning this new system, and they were worried that they would spend less time educating their children. Very few parents were satisfied with the new IEP document. Only five participants felt that CT SEDS had positively impacted the quality of their child's IEP. The overwhelming majority had either negative responses or felt that it didn't impact the quality at all. Several parents were not aware that there was a new IEP, CT SEDS. Um, teachers were sometimes communicating frustrations to parents about their concerns with CT SEDS and difficulties using the new system. The new system was often getting blamed for late documents. And parents were aware that educators were having difficulty with the new system, and therefore the parents didn't feel comfortable with the new system themselves. And they certainly didn't have positive feelings toward it, knowing that the educators were struggling um, with the system. Some considerations to think about um, is that when CT SEDS was implemented, it was during a time when many districts across Connecticut had well-documented struggles with having enough special education teachers. There was certainly special education teacher shortages in many districts across the state. And also after COVID and remote learning, which was very stressful for many, educators were mandated to implement this new system in which they didn't have comfortability with. So what can we do now? 
It's very important, I feel, to educate and inform all stakeholders about the reasons behind the implementation of CT sets. Parents need to understand that one of the goals of the state was to have a higher quality and more parent-friendly document. Training for parents could be more available. Many parents certainly do rely on outside organizations to obtain information. I also saw that um, in my surveys, many parents um, were getting their information and um, from advocacy groups, from the internet, from, from Facebook groups, from other parents. Um, so it's very important for training to definitely be available and um, accessible for everybody. There are many ways in which CT says is different from the old IEP. Um, first, we talked about the quality being improved. Um, present levels of performance are written above each goal, and parents can clearly read about where the student is and the skills they are working on in the same place. Um, parent input is collected separately for both academic achievement and functional performance, and prior written notice is a separate document. Um, there is a link, which I included here on my slide, um, put out by the state, which shows um, a very good visual of the old IEP compared to the new IEP. I think it's definitely worth taking a look at and just familiarizing yourself with those differences. Um, another point to uh, make is that teachers are going through IEP quality training as part of the state's five-year training initiative. Um, so teachers are improving their practice on how to write IEP goals and objectives, which all should benefit the students. So in conclusion, um, this slide just reiterates what the investigation sought to understand and also talks about how, even though it was certainly the hope of the Connecticut State Department of Education, that CT says would positively impact the views of parents regarding their involvement in their child's IEP process. This study shows that, unfortunately, that was not the result um, due to the rushed nature of the implementation and perhaps due to its timing. Educators were not knowledgeable enough or comfortable enough with CT sets um, um, at the onset of the implementation and consequently families confidence with the special education system was compromised. Thank you so much for watching and thank you to CT Path for inviting me to share this information and come on tonight. Thank you, everyone, and have a great night. So your findings are uh, pretty uniform among parents, and I have to say it's not entirely surprising. Uh, traditionally, IEPs have not been a parent-friendly form, but it does seem to be the majority of parents are having a hard time with it. Isn't that right? And I noticed that your your microphone is off. Yes, Kevin, you're right. Um, I'm I'm hopeful now, now that there is more time, you know, has been left since the implementation that things are improving um, and that parents are getting more familiar with it. But I think that parents really need to ask questions and access the documents that the state has. There's a lot of great videos and documents that the state put out to um, to teach parents and anyone who's interested in learning about the new IEP, um, you know, how that looks. Um, but again, parents need to stay involved and, and ask questions so that they can learn as much as possible about you know, the IEP, which drives instruction for their child. Is the report from your research available to our participants or anyone who, who would like to download it and look at, at, at it? Yes. No, it is available on ProQuest. It's published now, so anybody um, can access it through ProQuest, which is available online. So. Anyone could just, you know, do a Google search and find it. Okay, excellent, excellent. In the presentation, you mentioned that you ran into feedback from teachers that was not exactly positive e either. Uh, what else have you heard from school people uh, about the new form and, and the overall CT SEDS uh, system? W what have you heard from them about it? Well, I didn't. I did not survey teachers. I only surveyed parents. So what I the information that I gathered from parents was um, sometimes that the teachers were communicating their frustrations to the parents. You know, saying that you know the document, um, you know, things may not be running smoothly, or some parents identified that documents were late and it was being blamed on CT sets. So I did not survey teachers. Um, although of course I am a special education teacher and I do work in the field, I only did survey parents to get information from them. 
I see. Okay. In, in my experience, I've found that most teachers, administrators, folks who actually have to interact with CT SEDs, they're on a learning curve, a learning curve mm -hmm. that I, I think is a, a, a bit longer than they initially thought it would be. Um, but school people ha have told me that they, they think it could be improved. And uh, what are your thoughts about how the IEP form could be improved for parents? What do you think? Well, I, I do think it is a better document. Um, and again, I think that it's really important to know that the intent was to increase the quality of the IEP. Um, that's one of the reasons for the change. Um, you know, anything new is a learning curve. Anything that we learn that's new is difficult in the beginning. So I think that's to be expected. Um, and like I did mention in my um, PowerPoint, you know, coming off of COVID, teacher shortages, there's a lot of real issues that school systems were facing and the timing of the implementation perhaps was not ideal. Um, however, I think that um, there's a lot of positives to CT sets. Um, and I think that there's, you know, especially for me, um, having the present levels of performance right above the goals. Um, it's just a better, easier read. In the old document, the present levels were on a separate page and you had to kind of flip through it. Um, and this way it's right there. These are the concerns and these are the goals to address the concerns. So it's it's much um, easier to read in my opinion. Um, I also think having the parent portal available is great. So parents can look at documents, sign documents, have access to documents electronically, which they've never had before. So I think those are all positive um, aspects of CT sets. And I think, again, anything new, you know, takes some getting used to, but I'm hoping that as time goes on, um, parents will realize that, um, you know, again, it really um, is meant to be an improved document. I see. And you mentioned that other documents are available to parents through the parent portal. Uh, what other documents are there? So through the parent portal, um, parents have access to anything like evaluations, IEPs, um, consent forms are signed electronically now through the parent portal. So parents can really have access to all their child's documents through the portal electronically, whereas in the past that was never available before. Well, there are many advantages to having a system like that. And uh, I, I believe that the, the language in these documents can be translated into a number of foreign languages. Isn't that right? That's right. Yeah, there is a translation feature, which is another great aspect to CT sets that wasn't available before. So yeah, absolutely. Okay. All right. Well, this is a, a new system, something that's designed for the future. And I, I think that once we get past the learning curves, and, and by we, I mean, not just parents, but school people mm -hmm. too, that will right. have a much better system that still, it, it, it may be a parent, not exactly a parent friendly document, but with some advice and advocacy from outside parties, it is something that parents can understand. And it's important to understand your child's IEP, uh, mm -hmm. especially if you're going to a PPT meeting, everyone at that meeting will be familiar with the IEP. And it's important mm -hmm. for us parents to be familiar with it too. Right. And again, I think ask questions. Don't be afraid as a parent to ask ask your case manager, ask your team any questions you have. And, um, you know, that's just a good way to stay involved and be knowledgeable about the document. Don't be afraid to ask questions. I agree. I agree. Well, Jackie, thank you so much. Thank you for doing that research and for joining us uh, in, in this Facebook Live presentation. Uh, I hope sometime soon you'll come back and see us again. Anytime. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Any, okay. Anything I can do to help out. Okay. And thank you viewers for watching to the very end. And we'll be back in another video as the journey continues. Bye.